So what the heck is a relapse? Sometimes this is called a flare up, an exacerbation, but a relapse is basically new symptoms that occur and last more than 24 hours. They need to occur in the absence of an infection, extreme heat, or other potential trigger, and they need to be different and new from prior symptoms 30 days or more before. So if you have a relapse and then symptoms develop within 30 days, you might consider that one complex relapse, but if they're more than 30 days apart, they might be separate relapses. I like to refer to these as having a certain arc, hence I've provided this image. Typically a relapse starts, it's like the sparks that can lead to a fire. You might notice more mild symptoms initially, but they start to progress over hours or sometimes days until they hit some sort of peak level of symptomatology that oftentimes will bring people to medical attention, calling their doctor, going to an emergency room, etc. Symptoms at that point may be treated, but if left untreated, might continue on for weeks or even months before they start to diminish to some extent, hence the arc of a relapse. Sometimes recovery is complete and you may go back to baseline as you were prior to the relapse. Sometimes there is very incomplete recovery. Oftentimes in multiple sclerosis, recovery is fairly decent. In other conditions such as neuromyelitis optica, relapse recovery is typically not very good. It's important to understand what a relapse is so that we also can understand what a pseudo relapse is. Pseudo relapse is commonly the reliving of old symptoms due to some sort of trigger. Let's say that you had an optic neuritis in the past and it led to damage to the optic nerve and the vision in your right eye. You recover pretty well. You might not notice symptoms on a day-to-day -day basis. Years go by and you get a UTI. Your body expending energy fighting that UTI and the immune system being rubbed up from it might lead to a reliving of that old symptom where the vision gets a little bit blurred. It typically is not as severe as the initial relapse but it is very similar in terms of the symptoms that you experience. Commonly when people call in with symptoms, we'll ask screening questions to try to understand, could this be a pseudo exacerbation or pseudo relapse versus a true new inflammatory event that is causing new damage to the brain or spinal cord. Other common causes for pseudo relapse are extreme heat, extreme fatigue, extreme levels of stress. And so it's always important to take care of yourself while living with MS. It's also important to note that most commonly the symptoms will be relieved by treating the trigger. So in the instance of the UTI, if you get appropriate antibiotics, it not only will treat the UTI, but it will also treat the pseudo relapse symptoms. If you exacerbate yourself by being outside, having a great time in the summer and getting way too hot, and the vision starts to blur, typically when you get back in the air conditioning, drink some ice water, cool down, those symptoms will relieve again. It is very normal or common for people living with MS to understand what their triggers may be to relive certain symptoms. Sometimes it's severe enough that it might have them call their physician. Other times it might just be something they're accustomed to. They like to run, they get to mile two, and their symptoms start to come back a little bit. Um, they know that when they push too hard at work, at the end of a week, they might be a little bit fatigued and stressed, their symptoms might come back. Whatever the trigger is, they sort of understand what their limitations may or may not be, but they become sort of comfortable and they adapt to it. It's also very important from an emotional standpoint to understand pseudo relapses are not causing new inflammatory damage. So while it's distressing, and I don't want anybody to have these symptoms, at least there's not new damage that's occurring. In addition to relapses and pseudo relapses, patients might also experience progression of disease or worsening of disability. There's a new term that's being thrown around called PIRA, or progression independent of relapse activity. And what this is saying is that we are not experiencing inflammation, right? We're experiencing degeneration, and it's leading to just a slow decrease of function over time. This is something that can be extremely hard to identify because it might not really be noticeable living with something day to day or even living with someone with MS day to day. Disability progression is basically a slow worsening of function over months to years. It's something that's very hard to identify real time and so we work very hard to look for this. It's important to get 
regular clinical exams and also have regular doctor's visits so that you can continue to inform us how you are doing. Is it harder to get your tasks done at home or at work? Is it harder to care for yourself around the house? How are levels of fatigue? How's your function in taking stairs? All these little bits of information can start to tip us off that things might be slowly changing over time. This is important to note because it is typically refractory to most of our treatments. This is one of the reasons why it is so critical to treat early and prevent inflammation from occurring. The better we do that up front, the lower the likelihood of disability occurring down the road. We have another video on disease phenotypes that helps to explain the difference between inflammation and degeneration and how that impacts somebody's disease course and symptoms living with MS. If you haven't watched it, it will help to provide additional information to understand these concepts.